One fabulous thing about uh, docking in Baltimore is that we are right here for the Annapolis Boat Show. And today we're going to be giving you tours of two ocean going cruising boats. We're really, really excited to both receive the tours and show them to you. So, hello, my name is uh, Jonas Sellerup. I work as uh, sales manager at the yard in Sweden where the boat is being built. Right now we're in the saloon of uh, Halborassi 44. When we designed this boat we wanted to do a contemporary boat and a classic boat at the same time. So it's a modern hull with a straight bow, integrated uh, bowsprit, uh, twin rudders and the twin rudders gives you control in in all uh, situation and type of weather. It's a center cockpit boat. This boat here is actually slab reefing. So it has a furlex, manual furlex in the bow and a slab reefing main. You can control everything from the cockpit and it's a very easy and, uh, easy and fun boat to sail. So <clears throat> here we are in the V cabin. So it's a really nice cabin. You have a lot of storage. Both above in the cupboards here, you have uh, storage under the berth, you have storage under the floor. Uh, this boat is, has the layout with two bunk beds, which is really nice. And you, we have prepared for sea berth here, both up and down. So you can use it as storage or a sea berth. Uh, under here, a lot of storage. And we also have a big head here with a separate shower, toilet and in this here, you we can mount a washing machine. In the saloon here, this boat has a L sofa on this, this side. You can lift the backrest and then you have a berth here, a reading light. And if you want to use it as a sea berth, you keep the backrest down and we mount the lee cloth up here. Same on that side. An option is easy chair. We have a walkthrough galley on this side which is super nice. You have fantastic support uh, when the boat is healing. You have a top-loaded refrigerator here. You have a top-loaded freezer, but it's a double thermostat, so it's both freezer and refrigerator. And on top of that, a day fridge here. And this day fridge can be re replaced with a dishwasher if you want. We can also mount a microwave oven here. <coughs> so here we have the engine room. It's a Volvo Penta D275. This boat has a lithium uh, battery pack. So she's equipped with two twin alternators, big alternators, that charges the battery instead of a diesel generator. Diesel generator is still an option, but on this boat, no diesel generator, twin alternator and lithium batteries. A nice Halvorasi feature is this boat here is equipped with twin fuel filters with a valve. So you can switch and it also has a water alarm. Here is a manual pump that goes to the lowest point in each fuel tank. So you can pump out samples to make sure you don't have water or dirt in the tank. And before you do it, you just let the boat rest for two hours to be sure that the eventual water and fuel is separated. So it's a walk-in engine room. So I can walk in here go all the way here so you have the steering coming down there you have the gearbox the alternator coolant uh, bilge pump shower drain pump hot water tank seawater filter everything is here in one place we continue back into the off cabin so it's a very nice cabin this boat has a center berth another option as to as to have as a layout there is two separate berths a double berth on this side, sofa in the middle, <clears throat> and another berth here. But it's the same thing here. You, we can mount lee cloth in the center and on the side here, so you can use it as a sea berth. It's a nice sofa here, and a small uh, working table and storage on this side. And we actually have our own head here. So again, it's a separate shower, storage behind here, toilet, 
and the water maker is mounted in this area. So we have the filter and membrane filter under the berth here and the control panel here. This little tap here is actually for the water maker. So before you transfer uh, the water into the uh, water tank, you can taste it here. That's a nice feature. Here we are at the heart of the boat, uh, the navigation table, or I think today you can call it a working table. Not a lot of space for a computer. You have one additional instrument here where you can see speed, depth, everything. You have the master vault system in that display. One extra plotter inside here. Uh, VHF, stereo, heater, remote control for um, the autopilot and Iridium Go. Uh, the water tanks, you actually have three water tanks, everything in the center of the boat here. You have one spare on the starboard side, one spare on the port side and the main water tank under the floor. You can see the level in each water tank, port, starboard, main. You also have fuel tank, you have a main the main fuel tank is under the floor and a spare one under the port sofa and to transfer the fuel from the spare tank to the main you have a transfer pump here the rest is you know all the ray marine equipment uh, tank meter you have an engine room fan fresh water pump is here uh, an automatic bilge pump you have totally you have three bilge pumps so one small uh, automatic one one big emergency and a manual one. Flushing pump is to clean the anchor chain in the bow and the anchor light and then you have two refrigerator and one freezer. And I want to show you guys this typical Halberasi installation. All the cabling is here and each cable is marked and each boat has its own electrical drawing because each boat is different. So the lithium batteries here has a really nice spot low in the boat and uh, in the center of gravity. So washboard on gas springs, so you don't have to store it. Okay, welcome to the cockpit. Um, so we have a really deep cockpit here, which creates like a bridge deck. But it also gives us the opportunity to mount the live craft well hidden and protected under the floor here, which is nice. You can reach everything from here. You can reach the halyard winch on that side, the halyard winch on this side, and the halyard winch here is actually powered. Rest of the winches on this boat is manual, but you can order all of them electrical if you want. Uh, you have the main sheet behind. You have a panel here, so you can control the hydraulic backstay from the steering position and also the van is controlled here. So you can easily single hand this boat because I can do everything from here. You have one plotter here, you have another plotter on the outer chart table there which is nice because everybody in the cockpit will be included and also if you sail in heavy weather uh, that's where you sit. You use the autopilot and you have the uh, plotter right in front of you. You have the control for the retractable bow thruster and one option is also to have stern thruster on this boat. You can control the anchor up and down. You have the switches for the anchor winch and the sail and the control for the emergency bilge pump. You have a chain counter and you control the bathing platform from here up and down too. And all the gorges, all the control panels for the um, engine is here too. And electrical throttle for the engine. During night sailing, you have light in all the switches and you can actually dim them here, which is a super nice feature. And you have the fuel filter alarm for water just right in front of you too. A fantastic part of the Halvorasi 44. It's a large off deck and you have tons of deck storage. So two big deck storage and one very nice Halbrasi feature is the gin and tonic benches, super important. Uh, you have the fold out bathing platform here. This boat is equipped with davits. It's a really nice davit. You can actually lift it and turn it like that. That's nice. We have uh, the fitting for outboard engine and we have a foldable radar pole which is great. 
The good thing with that is that we can fit all antennas in one place. So on this particular boat you have GPS antenna for the full system, you have a separate GPS antenna for the AIS and the antenna for the Iridium Go. So welcome to the foredeck, it's a lovely place. You have the fitting here for an uh, inner, uh, inner stay, a uh, storm sail. You have the windlass and the outlet for the uh, deck wash pump here. You can control the windlass both from deck here but also from the cockpit. And you can also see the fitting under the inner forestay hill here. And in front of the fur legs we see a manual furler. That's where you fly the Code Zero. And all the way out on the bowsprit is where you fly the asymmetrical spin anchor. And this is a really nice feature. It's a ventilator actually with small uh, ping pong balls. So if water enters, the ping pong balls floats up and seals. So you can keep uh, the ventilators open all the time. No water will come into the boat, so it's great. We can also see the slab reefing. This boat is equipped with uh, uh, a zip pack and a traditional mainsail. We have steps here, so I can easily climb up to reach everything I need. Um, so some boats look like this with slab reefing, but we also build many boats with in-mass furling, push-button sailing. So <clears throat> if you don't order the boat uh, like this, traditional mainsail, uh, most of the boat is ordered with push-button sailing, which, which is uh, it powered in-mass furling, powered furlex and powered winch. So it means that you can take the sails in and out, reef, everything from the cockpit, you just push the buttons at the pedestal. So it's uh, extremely, you know, it's easy sailing, it's easy to reef, you can even reef downwind. So it's, it's, it's very nice, but it's, it's different, it's a matter of, you know, taste what you, what you prefer. Um, you know, with a zip pack like this and a powered winch, you can control the mainsail also from the cockpit on a boat like this. So. It, it, both options are very nice and we can do both on, the, on these boats. So some things that stood out to us on this tour were the just incredible forethought that went into the design of these boats. Everything is accessible for easy maintenance, quick maintenance, and all the things tell you ahead of time. So way before a system's gonna fail, it warns you. So that way you just go in, flip a lever, change a filter, like everything is so easy and accessible to you as the captain so you can properly manage the boat. One of the things that I really loved about this boat, it's got a big diesel and it knows it. So therefore it has all the systems to keep that diesel running extremely well. It has a pump so that you can pull and test the fuel to make sure you don't have sediment, water, or algae growing in the diesel. And then it also has warning lights at the helm to let you know that, hey, the filter is getting a little bit too much water in it. And then the best part, as you guys saw on the tour, the guy dressed very well, crawled all the way into the engine room. Everything in there is immaculate and spotless. Sits down and he's got access to the generator, the motor, just everything is all laid out right there. So all the parts that you would need, all the systems that you need to maintain those parts, everything is all exactly where you want it to be with access for you to comfortably be in there to work on it. Now seeing the boat sitting here in a marina, that's one thing. A huge testament to how great these boats are as ocean cruisers is that we cruised all around the Atlantic and into the Mediterranean and we saw these everywhere we went. So these boats get around and that's the biggest test. Once that boat has crossed the Atlantic, you know it's a good ocean cruiser. We're here at a gorgeous island packet. Now island packet, this is a really amazing example of an ocean going boat and you're about to find out why we're going to give you the tour by the owner of this actual boat who's here at the boat show and allowing thousands of people to just walk through his boat today it's incredible i'm dave stuffler good morning my wife and i have this island back at 439 for uh, about 18 months now this 439 is a uh, one of the new revamped models the island packet factory has made it has a nice U-shaped galley, freezer, a fridge and a freezer. We've got a nice storeroom, a utility room back 
here. It can also be configured as a bunk. I don't think anybody has done that yet. Easy access to storage. Fenders drop down through a hatch from the deck. You access to your lines right from without leaving the helm. More storage. It's a drawer, fridge, and freezer. This one happens to be the freezer. The other one is the fridge. A vented wash and dryer right here. It's uh, vented is key to the moisture gets off the boat it goes out the transfer steps we've got a 6kw generator and a soundproof enclosure easily accessible you can got lighting and space to work and then access to the aft end of the engine from this hatch there's doors port and starboard for the side of the engine and in a sec we'll open up the uh, the steps get to the main engine access access to the 80 horse Yanmar common rail diesel Got a high output 170 amp Balmar alternator and a smart regulator standard. The guest cabin is here. You got a queen size berth. You got a door set up so you can have private access to the head. When my grown children come, they have this and uh, they come home late, don't wake anybody up in the morning. They have the doors closed and I don't bother them. And you got a shower here with a plexiglass door. The main salon has got a, a double off the starboard. This pulls out. This port side is reconfigurable. It can be, in, uh, you have to, when you buy it, you can have it four ways, a full bench. I have chose the, uh, the convertible table that goes down to a berth. It's a nice sea berth. I unpack it. The table is uh, similar to what they all have, and it's got revamped, reconfigurable slots. And then the owner's cabin. It's got a uh, island berth. There's storage underneath. Our, our winter gear there because it's darn cold coming up the coast in the spring. And the forward head. Why don't you just climb up in there and take a look at the shower? Right? <laughs> These are uh, electric raritan macerating heads. It's an elegance model. They're uh, they're awesome. They're, I, there's I don't think there's any way you can clog them. So this is the, uh, the new layout on the 439 with a Solent rig. The Solent rig has a 95% jib on a boom or it's on, it can be on a, a track uh, on deck that the factory has developed if you don't want the big boom out there. You've got a 95% uh, jib on that boom and it's tacked, uh, it's cheated on deck so you can point very well. In fact, you can sail this boat uh, as far as 30, 35 degrees up to the wind, which is pretty awesome for iron packets. The outboard sheeting limits what you can do on, the, uh, on my old 40, for example. And then when the wind is off the beam about 40, all the way down to running, you got a white sail up there that's a 170% code zero. It's like a secret weapon. It, it makes the boat go in uh, eight knots of wind. You can get up to six knots. In between their feet, you can see our nice big windlass. Uh, and the, the hatch opens up so you, you have access to stow lines and fenders down there and, and get at your chain. It's, they call that a Hoyt boom. It keeps the, the jib shape as, the, as, as this shifts out. It keeps the jib tight and the, the sail shape is, is nice and true all the way out. Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, I love it. You know how we do the barber hall? Yeah. Then you don't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we set up a barber hall because we don't have a boom. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And it's here all the time. Yeah. You get used to it when you go up on deck. And, you know, there's no reason to go up on deck because everything is handled from the cockpit. We have electric winches to set and, and uh, furl the mainsail. Electric winches, port and starboard primaries for the, uh, the head sails. And the, uh, the furlers also uh, go on. So you can bring that big 170 in in a hurry if you need to. One of the other features of the uh, Island Packet uh, new design team that they've used on the 349 and this 439 is they've redesigned the hull to deck joint where they used to have to hide it with teak and it was beautiful when it was new but awful hard to keep up. My 40 teak never looked good until the day I sold it all at once. Pieces of it looked good but now there's no teak here. The handrail on deck is uh, stainless steel and even the eyebrow along the, the turn of the cabin is now uh, composite. So I don't have miles of taping teak maintenance to do. Down below, the woodwork, as you saw in the video, was just the, the same craftsmanship uh, as always that Island Packets are known for. Thank you. Any questions? You guys are up north.
you can find us on mollydsales.com. So this is an Island Packet 439, and this is an example of an ocean-going boat. Now one of the things that make it, o that make it an ocean-going boat are it's a full keel, and it is incredibly heavy. This boat is 48 feet long and weighs 32,000 pounds. It has a five foot draft, and it's a full keel all the way up to the front. So if you're in a horrible blow and you heave to, you got a nice big keel that's gonna hold you there and just make it less awful because you're in a horrible storm. So it's never gonna be great in a horrible storm. The rigging is strong. Everything on this boat is just stout and overbuilt. Now some notes between the two. The Halberg Rassi, it's also an amazing ocean going boat. We've seen them in all the places we've gone and the people who sail on them are always very comfortable. Now one thing that this boat has that the Halberg Rassi doesn't are lateral spreaders. So the spreaders go straight out to the side. They're not aft swept. And what that does is it lets you actually run looser rig tensions safely. So you need to have your rigging nice and tight. You can't have it just flapping around like uh, just blowing like string in the wind. But if you have a lateral spreader, you can have a looser tension, which means that you have then less stress on all the parts of the rigging components. So the attachments to the mast and the chain plates are then under less stress because they don't have to always be rock tight. If you have aft swept spreaders, you need to keep them at about 25% of their braking strength all the time, even at rest. So then when they're really loaded, they're really loaded. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Now we'd like to hear from you. Tell us what you would like to see in the ultimate blue water cruising boat. What are the top three things you look for when you hear blue water cruising? Let us know in the comments section down below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.